Hello, hello, hello. Uh, good morning, good morning, people, and good morning, world. And welcome uh, this morning to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning as we conversate about the latest sports topics that has taken place from this past week and will be upcoming this week. It is always a blast to have you all tune in and participate with us every weekend. As a reminder that every week we always like to begin our podcast by reminding our audience that the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast can be found on Facebook via the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast page. We have a community page as well as a general page. Uh, we are on Spotify uh, on it as the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, YouTube, uh, various uploaded videos from all of our episodes uh, as the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, Apple Podcasts as the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, so basically any platform where you can find your uh, podcast. Uh, my brother Jamar Goodman does a great job of taking care of a lot of the media stuff, and so we are on various platforms, uh, anywhere we can find your podcast. Uh, as well as our own Facebook pages via Brandon Price, uh, Jamar Goodman, and even in this case, uh, Sheree Howard. Sheree, Sh 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 Sheree? Sheree. Sheree. We're going to get it right, I promise you. we get it right. It's okay. Sheree. Yes. And, 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 and y'all, look, we got, we got Sheree. Uh, today is April 2nd of, 20, of 2022, and we have yet again seen another fascinating week in the sports world where we saw a number of jaw-dropping moves made in NFL free agency, where future Hall of Fame linebacker, uh, everybody, Bobby Wagner, signed with an already stacked L.A. Rams roster for five years. Um, Bruce Arians, out of nowhere, uh, just sent us out of nowhere, everybody, uh, announced a retirement and leaving the uh, reins to Ty Bowles. And uh, a few others not leaving with the uh, current franchises, so they've kind of stayed put Additionally, uh, this week, we've seen a lot of great basketball ranging from the NCAA tournament on to the NBA playoffs. And with that being said, introducing my brother from another mother, Mr. Jamar Goodman. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, y'all. I'm doing pretty good. How's everybody doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Thank you for asking, my brother. Lastly, introducing our guest for this morning, Sheree, on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Sheree or... Sh Sheree. Sheree, Lord Jesus. It's okay. Sheree, we salute you on this morning as you are the first female to chop it up with us on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Sheree is a Carolina Panthers fan, y'all. She is a UNC Tar Heel fan. She is not a South Carolina fan, okay? It's a difference, <laughs> okay? We in Chicago, we don't know this, but... Uh, Sheree is letting me know, hey, Brandon, it's a difference between the Carolinas here. It's not just a Carolina thing. This is North Carolina and South Carolina. And so she is a UNC Tar Heel fan, and they are in the Final Four today. Um, and she also loves her some LeBron James. And so, Sheree, we truly <laughs> thank you for your time. And we're excited for this conversation with you this morning. How are you, Sheree? I'm, I'm doing good. You know, uh, it's a little early for me, but you know, I I, I met the task and I am here. I'm excited to All be right. here, ready it's to talk to y'all. Yes, yes, indeed. Hence the early morning sports talk podcast. Gotcha. Yes. So thank you, Sharif, for chopping it up with us. And so with that being said, let's get right into it. And so uh Bruce Arians, uh, he is now the new front office member and retired NFL head coach. Uh, most previously of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he has announced his retirement from being a head coach and now has left the reins to Todd Bowles. And so just curious, you all, um, we'll let Jamar start first on this one. And then once we get to the basketball stuff, uh, Sheree, we'll uh, let you go first. Uh, so, Jamar, I'm just curious, um, do you like this move from Bruce Arians and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, just Bruce Arians in this case. And are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, let's say, judging off of Ty Bowles' head coach experience, maybe he was just jetted. And you, uh, Sheree and Jamar, y'all know what I mean by jetted. Um, kind of just was in a losing situation. Um, is it, you know, Ty Bowles' coaching experience, did that, that kind of concern you? Like, I don't know. So are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers now still a threat 
to come out of the NFC um, with uh, Todd Bowles as the head coach? Like, how do you feel about the situation? Man, honestly, you know, I, I give a salute to Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians um, has always been at the forefront of, you know, diversity in the NFL between, mm-hmm. you know, the staff, you know, plenty of members of his coaching staff, um, African-Americans across the board. He also, I think back in 2015, hired the like a first female assistant in the NFL. He has always been there. Him and Ty mm-hmm. Bowles go back since I believe Temple and then Arizona. And then, mm-hmm. you know, Ty Bowles went on to the Jets in a losing situation, losing environment. We'll get to that in a second. But, you know, he brought him back. He reeled him back in, put him in a great situation. And then actually for the, this is probably by far one of the first times I've ever really seen a black man actually like put in a good position. Thank you for that. You took the words out of my mouth, bro. I, it's like, you never see it. You don't. And so Ty Bowles actually probably like uh, coexists with Brady a lot better than Arians. Arians and Brady, two different styles. Ty Bowles comes from New England, comes from the Bill Belichick style. So he's going to be very familiar with that. They will not lose a beat at all. Brian Leffridge, still the offensive coordinator. I uh, believe everybody buys into Ty Bowles. Like I said, with the Jets, like it's like it's hard to, you know, be a bright spot in a dark place. So it's hard to, you know, uplift and do your thing in a situation that's toxic. It, it doesn't matter how good of a person or qualities or ability that you have. If you're in a bad environment, it's not going to happen. And so he gets a fresh start here in a great situation. Basically, you got all the core pieces back. Offense is ready. Defense probably got to shore up a couple of things. They probably finished that within free agency in the draft. But yes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are probably the second best team in the NFC right now. Mm, bold. All right. Mm, yes. So, sister, go ahead. Enlighten us. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, I think the thing that we need to realize, and I think Jamar sort of alluded to this fact, um, Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, they just they they didn't really get along while he was in Tampa Bay. And I Mm. think, you know, him coming back, you know, just kind of was one of those things where, um, where Bruce Arians, you know, felt like he would do better, you know, in the front office and leaving it to Ty Bowles. Um, I actually um, was a pretty decent fan of Ty Bowles when he was a coach uh, in New York. Um, No, they did not always have the best records, but I, I know that Ty Bowles did a lot for that defense and did a lot for that team while he was there. They had an so identity. They did. He did. And so I'm I'm really interested to see with what he's, you know, inheriting from Bruce Arians on how he's going to do. Um, I think that they still have, you know, all the pieces that they, they need to be successful. And I think given especially the NFC South, um, you know, where he's kind of, they're kind of the front runner. Um, right. In that division, um, I think it's going to be pretty easy for them to, you know, come back into this situation and and possibly make something of it. You know, they were they were just this short um, uh, this you know past season of um, you know going all the way. So I'm 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 excited to see what they're going to do. Yeah, uh, you mentioned a very good point as well. Um, the NFC South, y'all. Like, good morning, Ann. Good morning, brother. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yes. And so, um, introducing you guys in, Sheree, uh, Sheree, and this is our partner here on the podcast. And so, right now, and we are just talking about uh, the Bruce Arians retirement, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers situation. And so, uh, you, re- you bring up a very good point. The NFC South, y'all, like, Okay, I, I love me some famous Jameis, but you know, uh, are we really confident in, in famous Jameis in New Orleans? Um, we we got we don't know who the quarterback is in Atlanta right now. Uh, Matt Ryan just left, uh, so it ain't really no who's really the quarterback there right now. Um, and and you, I mean, I, I know you're a Carolina Panthers fan. And hey, you can say the same it. thing about the Panthers. You can say the <laughs> same thing about it. the no, Panthers. No, 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 speak on it. Because what the Panthers are the doing right is. now, what the Panthers are doing right now, I have no idea. I have no idea. And what? I live what? <laughs> Look, uh-uh, no child laugh, y'all. Stay serious, all right? Look, so let's talk about the Panthers for a minute. So you are a Panthers fan, and this brings up a really good point. Um, one thing we do notice, and, and this is a bright spot, uh, Sherry, is 
The Panthers got a whole lot of money, Jamar. Yep. They got a whole – they sit on a lot of bread right so, now. I believe they're so number was, one, right? Number right, one. they're number one in cap space at this in moment. In cap space, yeah. Right. So they got a lot of opportunity for flexibility. They do. You know, and things of that nature. Um, what do you think? Do you think y'all bring back Cam this season? Um, like I mean, for y'all quarterback situation, yeah, y'all, y'all? They've talked about it. Um, I think, you know, in an effort to continue to give Cam you know, a platform to play on, they, you know, they. I think they're definitely talking about, you know, trying to bring him back. Um, as far as him being the starter, though, I'm not too sure about that. You know, we still got, we still got Christian McCaffrey. Um, he reconstructed his um, his deal to to take less money so that they could have more um, cap space. And so, you know, I, I I wanted us to get Deshaun. I thought that that was going to be a good fit for us. Um, but I think Deshaun, you know, coming from South Carolina. Um, probably didn't want to be back in, you know, the Carolinas, which, you know, I understand. Um, but it just leaves a really big question for us because, you know, Sam Darnold obviously was not the answer to our prayers, um, even though we thought so the, the first few games. And and mm-hmm. who's to say that he, he, he can't be successful if our team is healthy? Because, see, a lot of people don't understand that our team wasn't very healthy um, the second half of that season. We lost Christian like game three. Um, right. And then, you know, we started like losing always. a bunch of other, we lost JC Horn the first game, I think, yep. you know, and so it's just like we had that a lot defense of defense in Carolina. They nice. Right. And, and that's ball. the thing, because it's like, you know, a lot of people don't, I always say defense wins championships. I, I, I fully believe that. And, and I felt like, you know, had a lot of our pieces falling together on our defense, we might've been a little bit better off. Um, but, you know, we can't talk about that. It's the past, you know. So we'll 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 have to see what what tricks the Panthers have up their sleeves, especially with the draft coming up. So right. Very, very interested. Definitely a lot of eyes on Carolina for real, because y'all got a lot of money. That plays a very important role. Carolina, y'all, is warm, it's nice. I mean, it ain't Chicago weather. So I mean, you know, you got some nice weather there. I mean, you know, you got a uh, 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 up and coming defense. And so you got some bright spots here. You got some bright spots mm-hmm. here. And so that's uh very, very real. And so uh Ian, what are your thoughts, bro? Like um are the are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers um based off of let's say Ty Bowles history in New York, et cetera. But of course he got a lot of history. Um we just learned from Jamar with Bruce Arians back in Arizona where he was uh, the D coordinator. A whole bunch of success, right, with Ty Bowles. So do you think that success in Tampa still continue in with Ty Bowles now at the Rams? Uh, yeah, I think they pick off, uh, pick up where they left off. Um, I don't see too much changing. Uh, maybe besides uh, maybe besides the defense. I know they lost a couple people on defense to free yeah. agency, like a couple DBs. Uh, but other than that, I think they pick off. Pick up where they left off, though. I don't see a big difference. It's not like nobody's leaving the building. He's just going upstairs. So I don't really see a big difference. Right. Gotcha. Yep. Appreciate that, bro. And uh, Prescott JB, uh, he stated Cam's terms 33 next month. With his plan style, it is not worth it. Um, it's interesting, uh, Josh. It really is, man. Because um, only thing I keep thinking of is I'm back. They just keep popping in my head, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Boy, man. <laughs> I'm back. I'm, I'm back. I gotta chill on my boy, I'm man. Back. Like, that's just been in my head. And I'm like, man, you know, like, maybe if you do surround Cam with some weapons. <laughs> you know well, what I'm saying? Like, but see, here's the thing. Um, because I, I remember the I'm back. And I was, I was really excited about that. Like, when he went out there and he did that, I was like, Right. Oh, I, we about to we about to run the table on the rest of the season, you know. <laughs> but when you when you get down to it, we've never had an we haven't had an offensive line in probably five years. And I've said yeah. this every every year we had a, a fully defensive uh, draft. I think like two seasons ago, and then we got J.C. Horn, the first pick of last year's draft. And I was like, okay, I understand that, but we need to get some young guys in here on the offensive line if we want to build, you know, something that can protect. 
our quarterback. And I think that's been the issue. And it's like when you have, you know, for, for some teams, it may have worked, you know, having a, because look at, um, what's your boy's name in uh, Cincinnati? Uh, Joe, Burrow. Joe Burrow. Look at Joe Burrow. And they had a, a pretty, they had a pretty weak offensive line too. But yeah. he was able to do some things. But it's like, you yeah. know, it's it's different. It was different in Carolina. And it's mm-hmm. like you put you put anybody back there and you got they're running through Swiss cheese. Of course they're gonna they're gonna mm-hmm. stack them a million times and, and all this other stuff. And so it's just like right. I've I've said it over and over again. And until we fix that offensive line, no matter how many weapons, because I feel like the Panthers had probably one of the best um offensive line i mean offensive offenses on paper um mm-hmm. you know with our with all the weapons that we had i felt like we should have been able to do something with what we had but you know when when you look at that offensive line it just wasn't enough to sustain and and that's what happened i don't i don't care yeah. who's back there whether it's Here, cam or deshaun or anybody here's a crazy thing so so i learned like maybe a couple of weeks ago as as bad as the record has been for carolina last year they had a top three defense last year, but they also had a, the bottom three offense. Right. So had the offense at, you know, was able to play in middle of the pack, it would have it been a different story all the way around. I mean, think about it, right, y'all? Like we was talking about Carolina, like up until a certain point of the season has been a wild card threat. Mm-hmm. They just faltered yeah. at the end of the season. It That's it. Downhill. I mean, the beginning of the season, they, what they started off, Five and one. No, I think he's like three and zero. Yeah, I think like like we lost. We lost Christian, and then it was like we just we started losing every game after that. Man, speaking of Christian, I feel like it's scheduled. It's scheduled for him to 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 get lost in in the month of September. It's like he's just gonna get hurt and don't come back. Part of the biggest problem in Carolina too, Uh, Sherry is uh, he he is so great when he's on the field. The biggest problem is, is can he stay healthy? We we all, oh, look, trust me, Jamar with this Destination Fantasy, they love him from Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. But I had Christian McCaffrey. It's, it's gotten to the point now to where they don't even, they like, all right, we got to make sure we got some leverage, okay? Because if Christian get hurt, <laughs> that's the next I, question. I, I just did my, my, my pre-draft rankings. I got Christian probably like RB seven or eight right now because of his availability issues. Yeah. And that's the thing, but, it, you know, it's like he came out the first two seasons and, you know, he did everything that we wanted him to do as a running back. Um, I had him on my fantasy team um, for two seasons and um, with him and and, and Deshaun um, was able to win one of my fantasies. So, you know, it was pretty cool to see, but it's just like after, um, after that second season, you know, it's like he wanted the responsibility of being a major part of our offense, but, you know, you can't be 95% of the offense and sustain, you know, especially as a running back, you know, running back is one of the, the worst positions to try to do that in. And, you know, they thought in Carolina, well, you know, and then he had Cam as his quarterback for a little bit. So it was like, you know, you put Cam out there, you know, with CMC and maybe you can make something happen. But again, you know, offensive line and, and not being able to and and playing 95 percent of the snaps, you know, eventually you're going to break down. Eventually you're going to, you know, and, and that's what happened to, to him. And I'm here. I want him to come back. And every year, you know, it, it seems promising at first. And then. Right. And then he's out. Right. 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 So, yeah. Um, and I see you making that face, man, like. You, you, you agree on, like, CMC is a great running back. It's just his health, man. And so, um, yeah. I mean, I think the – I think the Panthers, one of their biggest issues is they still – they still living off the 2015 season. So, we go back to the 2015 season. Kelvin Benjamin gets hurt. Nobody – nobody think – I even thought they was going to be bad. So, 2015, Kelvin Benjamin gets hurt. They go 15 and one, Cam wins MVP, go to Super Bowl, they lose. So then what a couple the next year, I think they go like seven and nine or eight and eight the or next something. Next year they like go that. to the wild card, they lose to yeah, the Yeah, and after that, they go to the wild card. Christian McCaffrey's rookie year. Still no old, still no help on the O-line. Defense is stout, still no help on the O-line. Really mm-hmm. still no number one receivers, none of that. So I think 
Cam Newton kind of winning MVP was kind of a gift and a curse because they feel like, oh, we won MVP with just no O line, no number one receiver. He can do anything. Wrong. Because then he ended up getting hurt. <laughs> he ended up getting hurt. And it just it's just been downhill since then. Then he gets hurt. Luke Keekly uh retires. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just been downhill since then. And then, like like she stated, I thought last year, I really thought last year they was gonna draft Justin Fields. I was surprised that they didn't draft Justin Fields. And I was so happy they didn't. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> too to a certain extent, but I just knew Justin Fields was going to Carolina. I knew. I was shocked when they drafted J.C. Horn. I'm not mad at the J.C. Horn pick, but I was very surprised that they drafted. I mean, and that's the thing. It's just like, you know, they it's 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 almost like we sort of shoot ourselves in the foot with the the especially the last few seasons with like some of the choices that we've made, you know, as far as the draft goes. And, you know, I sit there and I and I look at it and I'm like, you know, OK, well, that's, you know, a pretty decent pick. And then it's like we go all the way down. And I'm just like, what What did we really do? Like, what did we do to try to make ourselves better, you know, in those areas that we struggled in? And it's and it's apparent that we just don't. And I, and I get that, you know, defense is a major part of 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 who we are. And, and it's good to, to build on that. But uh, I mean, I really think that you should build on all all aspects of your team and not just not just one area. And, you know, when they did the all de- defensive draft, I was like, OK. You know that's cool. We needed to we needed to heighten up our defense, whatever. But then you come out the next the next the very next draft, and the first pick is another defensive uh, player, and I'm just like, you know, what what are we doing here, guys? Right, it's, it's very interesting because they got some weapons in Carolina. They got some explosive receivers that can take the top yeah. off the D. Um, you get a decently healthy McCaffrey. Um, I, I definitely agree with the the, the, the quarterback. And, and no offensive line. If you ain't got that and we in a quarterback driven league, y'all. It's a wrap. Ain't gonna win yeah. much. Um, but hey, Carolina got that defense. You got some you can build off of, and you got a lot of money. So there's a few positives uh that the Panthers can work with y'all going forward. And so we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that um as we break down our divisions um coming very, very soon in the early morning sports talk podcast. Um additionally, y'all, Bobby Wagner. Uh, former uh, great Seahawks linebacker, has now went uh, to L.A. with the Rams. Um, Jamar, I need you to enlighten us. Um, how the hell did this deal get done, first and foremost? And secondly, do the Rams even need Bobby Wagner? And then additionally, does this solidify the Rams as the Super Bowl favorite? So I know this is a lot of questions, but first I and got foremost, you. Jamar, we need to know how did this deal get done? Well, the deal got done because the Baltimore Ravens dropped the ball. That, that's first and foremost. If everything happened in a perfect world, he, he, him and Lamar Jackson would be best buds right now going out to Chipotle. I don't know. But, look, I guess what it came down to, he wanted to stay on the West Coast, honestly, uh, and I'm pretty sure he wanted to stay in that division because he, he probably got a, thing, a bone to pick with uh, yeah. Seattle because he didn't even know he got let go until he saw the news. So you treat an all pro, all decade, future first ballot Hall of Fame linebacker like that. So definitely has revenge on the mind. This is an upgrade over Von Miller to me, and Von Miller is a great player, but Bobby Wagner is on another tier here. Um, And so when you have that, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey already with that star-studded offense and the coaching and Cam Akers come back fully healthy next year, of course this team is the number one team in the NFC. It's it's not even close. I mean, Green Bay, who was supposed to be, you know, a threat, but they let go of their best receiver. They're number one wide receiver is Randall Cobb right now. Uh, so I, I don't know what to tell you there. Uh, Tampa Bay, I mean, you know, they got Tom Brady back, um, but, you know, they're still not the same team. But as of right now, they're number two to me. Maybe, I, I don't even dare want to say the Cowboys, but that's neither here nor there right now. But I mean, it's it's the Rams and everybody else for me. Pretty much. And, and and what about for the Super Bowl favorite? Do you feel that they it's the Rams and everybody else for the Super Bowl? Um, I would say it's the Rams and and the heavy teams in the AFC right now. But it's clearly the Rams and the AFC, and then it's another tier. So. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Sherry, well, how do you feel about this uh, Rams team now with Bobby Wagner? Like, um, they Super Bowl favorites, the NFC favorites. How do you feel about it? Only thing I'm mad about is that Bobby Wagner used to routinely jump over our 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 line to block our field goals. <laughs> and he did it. And I was like, when he we need to get him in Carolina so he can be for us and not against us. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, just one more level for for the Rams and and good for them. Um, you know, I don't think they really needed much else to to keep them in the Super Bowl, you know, contention. Um, but you know, this just this just gives them another layer. And um, you know, I we all know that nobody it's it's really hard to repeat um as Super Bowl winners. Um we've only seen it a few times. Um, but if there's a team that I would say would be able to do it, it'd probably be this team. So Good for them. Absolutely. I uh, just wanted quickly before I let you go in. Um, morning, all. Good morning, Deshaun. Um, Deshaun stated the rich get richer. Bobby Wagner, LA is a monster move. I totally agree, Deshaun. They don't even need Bobby Wagner, but yet no. he is in LA. And I mean, like, Sherry, like, who, who, who won't want to go to LA? Like, it's LA. Like, you know. You got a great football team. You got all this publicity and stuff. New stadium. You know, new stadium. You get all type of love marketing deals walking down the street. Hey, Bobby, you want to be on my, you know, like, I mean, this all type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so who doesn't want to, like, be in this L.A. market, man? Like, you got Sean McVay, one of the great head coaches in the game right now. So, yeah, the rich get richer. Um could it be, Jamar, just really quickly, that the L.A. market, that L.A. money market, that power in L.A. could have brought him there? I'm sure. I mean, it's like you said, it's L.A. I mean, I mean, look at, look at the, the NBA. Why, why did LeBron James choose Los Angeles? It wasn't strictly basketball. It was for other stuff as well. I mean, we're going to talk about that shortly. Yes. And so, yeah, um, that, is, that is so true. Uh, Prescott JB stated, let Lamar win a Super Bowl this season. He's going to get the fattest contract in history. Yeah, uh, we would love to see that, Prescott JB. It's only it's just unfortunate that um, Bobby Wagner's not there, but maybe they can make some moves, the Ravens, because um, yeah. that <laughs> AFC North is uh, going to be lit. Maybe they can actually have a healthy running back week one, because they yeah. lost three of them before the season started. Right. Yeah, they have not been healthy at the running back position. It was so bad for the Ravens last year. Man, Jamar almost stated he was ready to go suit up. I'm like, Jamar, man, like, <laughs> really? Like, uh, Jamar, like, man, I might have to do this, dog, because we don't know who's going to be the running back dog for the Ravens right now. Look, Everybody just I do what I have to do, man. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, you just had a lot going on with that. And so, um, yeah, here we are. Um Ravens, we'll see. We'll see, Prescott, JB. It's a very interesting dynamic, though. And, um, Ian, so your thoughts, bro. Um, how do you feel about um, this situation? Uh, funny scenario. I kind of predicted this like a week ago. I um, was having a conversation yeah. with uh, one of my friends. He's like, man, I wonder where Bobby Wagner going to go. You know, just joking. Right. I was just like, man, he's going to go sign with the Rams. Get off of work one day. <laughs> notifications to my phone. <laughs> I was sitting in the car. I was just like, are you serious? But, I mean, like you all stated, I mean, it's not surprising. You got to look at it like this. Like, these guys getting older. They're coming from cold climate areas. You know, they want to go somewhere warm. Look at Allen Robinson. He goes to L.A. Uh, you got Tyreek Hill. He's going to Miami. You know, they just want to – it's a better market or just as big a market as they leaving. It's warmer. You know, they got to think about their kids. I mean – and like Jamar stated, I don't think he wanted to lead the NFC West anyway. So uh, I was surprised, but it was just like, really? Like, bro. Did, really did, they, did they really need Bobby Wagner? Like, really? The, um, definitely, man, the rich getting richer. And, um, Always. Yeah, Always. man. And, and, and like you say, and um, the Rams didn't need him, but, hey, um, they got him. My, my question, Jamar, y'all, is are the Rams done? 
Because the way this damn team has been so aggressive, I would not be surprised if they pull out something else before <laughs> this this season started. We'd be like, they, wow. They they, they trying to him. they trying to resign OBJ, but at this point, I don't know what money, but they trying. Yeah. They they probably gonna try to low ball him because of the ACL. But if he didn't get hurt, I don't think he would go back to LA. So they might still get him. I don't know. Try for him to say no, y'all. I, I can assure him him winning a Super Bowl, him being from that area, the LA Rams, great it's, it's, it's great situation. It's gonna be hard. So we'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. But um, all right, y'all. Um NFL always great conversation. Um, but let's talk some uh, college hoops now, everybody. Um, we had the Elite Eight last weekend, right? And so with the Elite Eight, we uh, saw a few interesting games. Um, we saw our boy Charlie Moore, unfortunately. Um, and we, we, we Chicago uh, guys, uh, Cherie. So um, Charlie Moore went to our high school, me and Ian. Uh, um, basically, uh, he played for Miami. And Miami uh, pretty much got the brakes beat off of them. Um, but a lot of that mostly came because they were down and they got desperate. They, they started shooting threes and different things. They were up most of the game, but it just faltered. So Kansas is in the Final Four. Uh, North Carolina, um, and congrats to the uh, now former head coach of St. Peter's, who's now at Seton Hall, y'all. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, North Carolina took care of uh, St. Peter's very, very well. And um, Jamar, you've pointed this team out um, prior to the tournament as dangerous, and they are indeed killing it right now. Um, Duke. Uh, so Sherry's just sitting over here. She's like, yeah, we got two of them in the Final Four. Um, I don't know if she's much of a Duke fan. <laughs> Not by that face. I know it's the- Man, did you see the hoodie? <laughs> it's a big difference again, right? It's a big difference again, right? And so, yes, it is a big difference, y'all. And so, although uh, North Carolina is there, they got Duke today. And so um, Duke is possibly there, y'all, with a possibly Cinderella run that would send off uh, Coach K with the national championship. Well, what a story that would be. Yeah. Um, and then you got the Villanova Wildcats, who uh, Jamar and me know don't miss free throw. And they don't beat themselves. So we got really, y'all, what you want to call four traditional powerhouses yeah. that we've known to be great in college basketball for years in the blue final bloods. four. Yes, yes, blue bloods. And so uh, with that being said, um, Cherie, break it down to us. Um, with, uh, and I'm going to save the Carolina Duke for last. Um, who do you got in the final four between? Uh, Kansas and Villanova, which is going to be a great game, and then Villanova, I mean, then North Carolina and Duke. So give us your picks first, and you can give us a while, whatever. Um, I'd probably go Villanova um, in the other game because, um, like you guys said, you know, they don't miss free throws, um, and and you, you, really, you really have to go out there um, with, you know, the idea of beating them, and they've They've they play such sound basketball um, that it's it, it is really hard to do, um, you know. So I I I really it's going to be a good game, I'm sure. Um, but I I really see Villanova just kind of taking that one. So but do you really see that Sherry with them missing that point guard? He got hurt. Right, and I and and I do realize that, and that and that was, it sucked for him. Um, that was a really it was really bad timing. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm always believing in next man up, you know, and that no matter what sport that is, I just feel like that's, that's what you have to do. And I don't feel like this situation is any different and I feel like they'll figure it out. Um, and so, you know, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I don't see, um, Kansas really having anything, you know, for them. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get to this North Carolina and Duke. What's happening with this? Um, well, I mean, you know, um, this this game is is so big, especially in the state of North Carolina. 
Um, you know, I always tell people, if you're from Charlotte, you're a Tar Heels fan. If you're from everywhere else, you're probably a Duke fan or, you know, NC State or whatever. Um, but this will be the, the very first meeting in the NCAA tournament that they've had in 100 games that Coach K has coached against North Carolina. So there's a lot of implication in this game. Um, of course, there's a lot of talk about the get back, you know, because we, uh, well, because the Tar Heels um, handed Coach K a loss at his final can um you oh, know, I'll beat the brakes off Duke in Duke in, in Cameron Hall, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, a little bit of bad blood there. Um, but you know, I I I don't I hate making a pick because I never like talking about my team because every time I talk about my team, we always end up losing somehow. Um, but you know, I'm definitely pulling for Carolina for this one. Um definitely wanting to see a good game uh I think for if even if we lose this game um I'll still chill, uh, cheer for coach K um because it is his final season it's his, his last hurrah um and you know I'll be I'll be cheering for him the rest of the way but you know really hoping for a Carolina win and a lot of people don't realize this but Carolina shouldn't have been ranked number eight um, I yeah, understand we I'm had a couple there, losses, like, and I think the losses that we had, you know, were enough for them to to put us at an eighth ranking. But I really don't think that that they've played that way um, throughout the tournament. I think that they've consistently gotten better. Um, I think that this is it's, it's going to be it's going to be a massive game, um, mm -hmm. and I know at least for us here in Charlotte, we will definitely be around the TV somewhere watching for it. So. Yeah. Definitely. Big, big, big game. Absolutely. Yeah, Jamar, uh, your thoughts, bro. Like, who do you got for the Final Four? Man, oh, man, oh, man. So, I, I definitely feel bad for Villanova here. I, I feel like yeah. – because I, I feel like they're probably a better coach team than uh than Bill Self and them Kansas Jayhawks. But with Buddy being hurt, and if I, I saw it live, dude, his Achilles looked like Kevin Durant's when that happened. It exploded like somebody yeah. threw a oh, grenade yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. Boy, and that, and if I'm not mistaken, he's like their best player, a winner of the top two players. So that doesn't you, help whatsoever. The best player, at least I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they they're the best free throw shooting team in the nation, and they play hard. Those defense, I don't I don't know. Is it going to be enough for for Kansas? Like Kansas has you know shown that you know they can be vulnerable. Hence, I mean, they was losing at halftime against Miami last but last week. Yeah. And then, like you said, Brandon, desperation back against the wall. I guess when you you know you put somebody back against the wall, they can come out swinging. So that's what happened. Um, so I, my my heart wants to pick Villanova, but I feel like Kansas just has too much for them at this point. All right, and as far as you know, this game here, like, believe me, uh, Sheree, like I, I know it's big there. But everywhere else, this this game is just like it, it's magnified. Like we 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 feel it as well. Um, like you stated, the first time they ever met in the NCAA tournament. Um, I'm on record early saying early this week, this is like basically for eternal bragging rights because when's the next time they're going to be in the tournament? Another 100 years from now? Like, this this is it. And then, you know, Coach K on his, on his last dance tour and uh, Carolina beating the brakes off of him in Cameron Indoor Stadium. And then it's to the point where Coach K gets on the mic and said, this is not how I expect, you know, Duke to play and yada, yada, yada. Man, look, North Carolina is the hottest team in this tournament right now. Dude, between uh, Baycock and I, I call this dude the fake Dirk. What's his name? Namac or whatever his name is. Mm -hmm. Like, just their style of play. Like, I feel like this is going to be a bunch of buckets in this game. A bunch. Like, Duke, Duke's Duke been playing pretty well, too. They, they got their act together ever since, uh, you know, losing to Virginia Tech in that uh, ACC tournament game. Nevertheless, um, I'm team Tar Heels. The only, all, the only time I rooted for Duke was when Zion Williamson was there because we never seen anything like that in college basketball. Other than that, I, I'm rooting for the Tar Heels. I, I got them winning. Nice. Yep. And your thoughts, bro? Uh, let's see. Kansas and Villanova. Um, as you guys stated, um, Villanova had a big injury. It kind of sucks. Like you guys said, it's just bad timing. But um, – that should be a tough game. I mean, both of these games could 
it could be either or. You know, they blue bloods. They, they all play hard. So Kansas and Villanova, uh, I'm going to go Kansas. I'm going to go Kansas. I like how Kansas came out in the second half against Miami. They look pretty focused. If they come out pretty focused like that, they, they, should, be, they should be fine. Um, the Duke and North Carolina game is crazy. As Jamar stated, that's going to be – it's going to be so amplified. It's crazy. I actually can't wait to see it. Um, For real. I will say this: If the game gets close, Duke are gonna get they're gonna get some questionable calls. I will say that <laughs> I feel like they're gonna get some questionable calls if the game gets Duke, close. Give us the call. You <laughs> <laughs> gonna call out Tim Donahue? Questionable Donnie. call. Uh, it I, honestly, it would be dope to see Coach K uh, right off into the sunset. Um, go to a national championship. <sighs> I want to pick Duke, but I'm gonna go North Carolina. I'm gonna go North Carolina. I'm gonna go North Carolina and Kansas for the for the championship. North Carolina, Kansas. That sounds like a pretty decent championship. Um, yeah, fellas. Um, my biggest problem with Villanova, y'all, is exactly as y'all stated. Um, for me, my biggest problem, and y'all remember if you remember watching the game, Jamar. Villanova was staying on deck. Didn't they play, uh, Sherry? They're, like, they played like six people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have a short rotation, yeah. like seven people tops type deal. Yeah. yeah. So, in this case, with the point guard, this was that second he scored Justin Moore and that menace leader being out, you know, with his Achilles. Like, now you six deep, pretty much. And so, in this case, Kansas clearly has a depth advantage. Um, and I think that's big as far as talent. I know they both talented. I mean, these yeah. are blue bloods. Um, and, and so I'm expecting for uh, Villanova to put up a serious fight here. Um, and I don't think this will be a blowout by any proportions because this is a J Wright coach team. All these programs have won a national championship. They've all been in big moments. This ain't nothing new to them. Um, this is what makes it so serious here because you see when St. Peter's y'all got to the I mean, they did great against a lot of the other teams, but they just got to them that 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 those big boys, and they got they got the break speed off of them. I don't see that happening with a Villanova. Like even regardless of their depth issues, they still they're still Villanova. They're still a very well coached team. But I think it's 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 for for a prediction standpoint, y'all. It's just really hard for me to pick Villanova here. If they pull this out, y'all, I'm gonna compare this to like. I don't know. It's going to be like one of the most, it's going to be a really big upset for me because um, who does this with six people? And so um, it'll be interesting to see, but for that reason, I, I have to pick Kansas. On the other hand, with uh, North Carolina and Duke, everybody named Mama want to watch this. And Sherry, this is just not just outside of uh, Carolina or North Carolina. This is from Chicago to Seattle, wherever. Um, everybody know about this rivalry. Um, everybody has watched this for years. I've, I've watched that North Carolina Duke game recently, um, and, and, and which, you know, Duke, obviously, um, it was a, it was a really bad outing, but, um, coach K y'all, um, I think he's on a mission. Here, okay. Um, and it's not just coach K, but it's his team. Um, somehow y'all, they have turned things around magically on a defensive end. Um, and so I know this will be a close game, y'all, but I feel like um, I feel like Duke right now, y'all, is just they playing on a different level right now. And 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 who is this kid, y'all? Who is this center? This this Paolo Bancharo. Um, <laughs> boy can play ball. A lottery pick. Yes, this this boy can play. This boy can play some ball. And so it's going to be really interesting to see him, y'all, matched up at moments with Caleb Love, with um, these different guys, Leaky Black. Um, this kid can shoot the rock um, from, from outside, from anywhere. Um, and so it's going to be a very contrasting style, which makes for a great fight. And so I'm very, very interested to watch this for all these reasons. And um, I'm going to go with Duke, y'all, but damn it. I, it could easily go North Carolina. I don't even want that pick to count, but I'm just going to do. And so 
for the national championship in this case, y'all, I got Duke and I got Kansas. And so quickly, y'all, I need y'all national championship picks. So who win it at all? So Sherry, is, is North Carolina win it at all? Yes. Okay. She got North Carolina win it at all. Jamar, who you got win it at all, bro? Sure, why not? North Carolina, just because they're the hottest team in the field right now. Why not? I don't blame you. Ian? Uva Davis and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah, y'all, y'all all look fantastic here. Um, for me, <laughs> um, I got to be the oddball. Damn, I'm always the oddball. I'm going to go with Duke to win it all. I'm going to go with Duke to win it all. Hey, at least but, it's a North yeah. Carolina team. <laughs> yeah, and so it, it'll be uh, very, very interesting to see. But um, I, I'm believing that whoever possibly win that Duke-North Carolina game um, could win it all. But then again, if... Watch, if, watch it be Villanova. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> this Look, man, be this is college basketball be crazy like that, man. Um, yeah. You know, like, but Kansas, y'all, if Kansas take care of Villanova easily then they could be rested up a little bit for the national championship and Duke and North Carolina end up beating up each other. So it, it's going to be really, really interesting, but I would love to just see that Cinderella story. I don't know if it'll happen, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, very tuned in to see what happens. So yes, those are our national championship picks. We will post those y'all on the page. Uh, everybody on the podcast um, is going with the Carolina team, North Carolina team. Um, Ian, Sherry, Jamar, North Carolina. I got Duke. All right, y'all. Let's now get into some NBA. N W NBA. And Sherry, I want to definitely talk some W NBA, which um, this NBA MVP race, y'all, is mighty close. Okay. And so right now, uh, many have the Joker, Nicole the Joker of the Denver Nuggets as the leading candidate to win this award and repeat. And so um, just coming from you, Sherry, who is your pick for MVP? Like, do you have the Joker or do you have someone else such as Joel Embiid, Giannis, John Morant, et cetera? Who's your pick for MVP? Well, you know, I, I, I really understand what, you know, Jokic and, yeah. and have what they've done, you know, for their teams. Um, but I would honestly like to see like a, um, a Trey Young or a John Morant, um, get the MVP and I know it's probably out of the realm of possibility but um they've both done you know major things um for their team now obviously um we found out that um John Morant's team is pretty good without you know without him you know the the Grizzlies but it, it doesn't take away you know from what he's done so you know that those would be my picks Right, you want to see something different. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mad. So yesterday, um, Ian, uh, Terrence, you know, our buddy from Morgan Park, mm -hmm. um, he stated, you know, the NBA is trying to push this international BS. <laughs> and he basically I, I, agree to, I agree to a certain extent. Because y'all like, notice. I feel like every year in the NBA, they kind of pick who they want to win MVP. Like, um, like I feel this year it could they wanted Luca to win, but you know they kind of started off kind of flat. Um, they kind of picked it up now. They're kind of playing really well now. He's been playing. He's been playing lights out. Like, but now I mean, if you look at all the MVP candidates, is what they are international players is what Giannis, and B, um, Jokic, and somebody else, but. I mean, we had a lot of players. I mean, why is nobody talking about Devin Booker? He has the number one team in the NBA. I mean, he's been hurt a little bit, but, I mean, he's pretty much played all year. Um, just like days. earlier this season, we was making a case for DeMar DeRozan. Of course, the Bulls, well, they had a run where they started losing. But, you know, um, even in past years, uh, Chris Paul. Chris Paul has never been – He's never in the MVP conversation. I mean, even back to his OKC days, he should have been in the MVP ranks. Um, I feel like guys like Kevin Durant or Steph Curry or even LeBron James, I feel like they're not going to win MVP anymore. I mean, I just feel like it's always a narrative push with the MVP award. They say it's, I mean, depending on your team and your performance, but I mean, I mean, there's been a lot of players that's, you know, been 
putting up numbers and putting their team in good position. Like even the John Morant situation. John Morant has he's had an awesome year. Like it's been crazy. But I guess him being hurt and them, I think they're like 20 and two without him. 20 and two I mean, without they, him. They 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 fantastic. Yeah, it's something <laughs> crazy. So I guess that kind of hurts him, but I mean, it's been a. I mean, it's been a lot of players putting forth a lot of effort. Um, I mean, but right this year, it's been kind of, it's been kind of up and down. You know, you have one player playing like an MVP this week, and they go, uh, they go have a bad streak, and then uh, somebody, then somebody else emerges. But I feel, me personally, I feel like right now it should be between uh, Jokic, Giannis, and Devin Booker. I feel like those are the top, my top three. Yeah, Did John um, Morant come in a slight fourth only because he hasn't played. You know, I don't know why. I, I don't know why he hasn't played recently, but he hasn't been playing. So those would be my top four. Yeah, yeah. Because I firmly feel like y'all, if um Steph Curry, um and the Golden State Warriors, y'all had the overall best record in the league. Yeah, I can guarantee you, Steph Curry would be all over them charts as the pick for MVP. Mm-hmm. And I make this point, y'all, because I feel like with Phoenix Jamar, we kind of lose them because they're not a sexy team. Yeah. They're not the team where you watch and you're like, wow, look at them just go up and down the court, hit them threes. Look at them scratch from the three point line and go dunk the ball like Giannis. Like this, this is just amazing to watch. Phoenix is not that team. They just lock you down. They're very fundamentally greatly coached by Money Williams, by the way. Shout out to Money Williams. I mean, if 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 Devin Booker don't get the MVP, then at least Money Williams should get the coach of the year. It, it should at least be that. Because this man has done, he's done nothing but win, y'all, since he's gotten to Phoenix. Like, he's totally transformed that whole program over there. And so, yes, um, Steph Curry, I feel like if he, if they were, yeah, he'd just be all in MVP conversation. But Devin Booker somehow just get dismissed. Um, the guy go off for of fifty, it just get dismissed. You're like, ah, you know, no, no. I feel like Joe could get fifty. It's all over the news for a page, blah blah mm-hmm. blah. I'm yep. just like, wow, like how did you guys keep dismissing this team who literally right now is on the verge of winning sixty five plus games, um, but yet and still. They don't have nobody even in the top five of the MVP race. That that's just my only point, man. Jamar, uh, your thoughts, bro. Oh man, this this has been one of the more interesting MVP races because you know for the longest time, you know, it changes every week. Like yeah. like we mentioned, like a month ago, we were talking about Demar Derozan out there. But I, I don't want to talk too much about the Bulls' woes at that point. Um, <laughs> look, um. To your point, Ian, you mentioned, you know, pushing the narrative, well, to a certain degree on international players, but it, it just seemed like the international players this year or in the recent years has, you know, really taken over. Um, I think what hurt Devin Booker is the fact that him and Chris Paul, like, kind of almost canceled each other out. Chris Paul was the one initially at the top 10 for MVP until he got hurt, and then yeah. Devin Booker started taking over. But it's like, at this point, it might be too late. Mm-hmm. Um like you mentioned with Luca, flat start. He's having a surge lately, but too late for him. Yeah, too late. Same thing, Jason Tatum. Like that team yeah. was freaking under 500 for a while. And then all of a sudden, in the last, yeah. what, since All Star break, just been on fire. But you need to perform the whole year, not just half the year. So that leads down to three uh, MB, Jokic, and uh, Giannis. I feel like MB's uh, MVP run came to an end. Uh, in the last week between the Sixers looking flat and what Giannis did to him at the end of that game. Mm -hmm. And so that means there's two left. And for me, I cannot give an MVP to a guy with a six seed. The only MVP in NBA history that got an MVP with a six seed is Russell Westbrook. And that was the year. The first year went off. He He was without the the ramp. That was a a legit six seed MVP. Yes, and that was an anomaly. That's the only time. So, therefore, the reason why I left. I bring up the standings. Uh, 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 uh. And my boy, the MVP, man. This dude's been playing lights out. This dude yeah. has taken his game to another level. This game had put the world on notice in the finals last year when he had a 50-point triple-double to close out the finals. 
hitting 17 to 19 at 50. <laughs> Went to what? Chick fil A and ordered a 50 piece. 50 mm-hmm. piece, not 49, 50 piece. <laughs> <laughs> Hit 17 to 19 at the free throw line. He overcame all them problems on the national stage. And now my boy is back to do it again. They are one game behind Miami for the number one spot in the East. They just snuck up and he's just doing his thing. He canceled out Durant. He canceled out Embiid in back-to-back games. Give my boy the MVP. Let's start playing. Very, very uh, good point, Jamar. Uh, Giannis has made momentum. But I feel like somehow, some way, y'all, they still want Joker to get this team. I, I, I don't get I, it. I, I, I see your point, Jamar. But, like, seriously, like, this is why I brought up Phoenix, in. Phoenix is clearly going to be the team with the best record. But yet and still, you want to give it to a guy that has a six seed in the West. Ooh, yeah, I look, mean, look. they battling y'all. Wait, they battling for the seventh seed. Let's not forget that. To give him, to give him credit, he has been holding it down. Jamal Murray's been hurt. Michael Porter Jr. has been hurt. And I, you know, I don't know when those guys. Michael Porter Jr. just had a setback. I seen so they don't like he coming back this year. Uh, Jamal Murray, I don't know what's up with Jamal Murray, but I mean. I'll give him credit. He has held it down for them. You know, they're still in the playoff line. It's not like they're playing like the Lakers or somebody. So, I give, I give him credit. One credit is due. He, he's still been balling. Like, but, I mean, Giannis, Giannis, they just – Giannis and Phoenix, they've been looking scary. They're, it's looking like it's going to be part two again. Exactly. You know, My point. Yes. yes. And so, yeah. you know, Phoenix is – the best record in the league, y'all. And you got Denver who will end up with the seventh seed in the West. You telling me you'll get this guy. Oh, I'm done. But go ahead, Jamar. What were you saying? I, I, I was going to say just, just think about it. The Utah Jazz, who we've, you know, have imploded and just look so inconsistent. And and we don't know this Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell thing's going to be around next year. And they got a better record than the Nuggets. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Right. And, and, and yeah, so, you know, we'll see y'all how this uh, race turns out, but y'all all make uh, really good points. Um, it seems like none of us agree with the Joker. So um, we'll see how it turns out, though. Um, I hope this award is not becoming more political than anything. Um, so we will see. Um, on the other hand, y'all, let's switch uh, to WNBA. Um, and that'll be, uh, we'll get back to the NBA later. Um so, Sherry, um, Brittany Griner is over uh, seas in Russia. Um, you know, she's been pretty much detained um, for some belief for political purposes. She just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, right? And so um, she got a little bit of uh, cannabis or whatever um, that she got caught in the airport with, boo-hoo. Um, and right now um, it's stating that she could be over there for a year plus. Um, just from a basketball standpoint, um, as a, as a basketball fan, a WNBA fan, would you, um, what does she do for the, for the game? Like, how does she impact the game? Like, do you enjoy watching it? Cause I know for damn sure I do. Um, I definitely do. Um, and you know, this, this situation, you know, it couldn't come at a worse time for her. I feel like, you know, she has over her entire, you know, career in the WNBA so far, you know, had to deal with, you know, some adversity um, anyway. And then to now be dealing with this, you know, in a place that is hostile to, you know, not only um, Ukraine, but also to to the, the U.S., you know, it's, 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 it sucks and 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 you know she she does she brings a lot to basketball she brings a lot to her team and i just you know um i was reading some of you know some of the reports last night um and it, you know it's just it's it's a heartbreaking situation um and i I'm, I'm really hoping that they come to some sort of conclusion soon you know to to get her back home safe um but, you know, with everything that's going on right now, it doesn't look that way. And, I, you know, I, I feel for her. Yeah, I'm with you. This this is a, a very sad situation because I really enjoy watching Brittany Griner, too. Um, she is a fantastic ball player. Uh, we all know this. 
Um, and, and she's one of the first females that's dunking consistently. Um, three-time WNBA champion, been to the finals five times, MVP multiple times. The, 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 I mean, we know what she did at Baylor. Um, Brittany Griner is like, she, she's the Shaq. She, she, she's running things. And, um, man, you know, Sherry, the part I hate to see is, like, you see all the moves that Phoenix made after they lost to the sky? I don't know if y'all pay attention, Jamar, like, to the WNBA, but the yeah, Phoenix man, Mercury man. made a lot of moves this offseason. They was pissed. They like, yeah. we lost to the sky. Uh, we got to go get aggressive out here. They went and they got some, they got some hoopers. To, to then they getting Kia Nurse back. I mean, they, they went ahead and they made some moves. And so, um, just got a question for everybody on here. Um, and Sherry, you can start us off. With the offseason moves made from various WNBA teams, right, to match my incredible Chicago Sky in their championship run, which team do you feel has the best chance of bringing home a WNBA championship this season? So, Brittany Griner, unfortunately, she's not with Phoenix. But Phoenix still, you know, still got Diana Taurasi. They still got Skylar Diggins-Smith. They still got Kia Nurse. They went ahead, Jamar, and they took – they took um, – who was our shooting guard from Tennessee? Um, Diamond the Shields. She's in yep. Phoenix now. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, damn. They went ahead and they took Dab the Shields from us. Um, the Seattle Storm, they got Gabby Williams. They got Brianna Stewart. They, they loaded up Seattle big time. The L.A. Sparks with Derek Fisher. They went ahead and they loaded up big time with a lot of talent. The WNBA, y'all, is becoming like the NBA. It's like really stacked at the top with these pretty much all-star teams. And you're just going to have a gauntlet of, like, eight teams pretty much. Um, so the Phoenix Mercury, Chicago Sky, Seattle Storm. The Connecticut Sun had the best record last year, and they got the MVP, the former MVP. Um, the Las Vegas Aces, y'all. Uh, we see what the Aces got with, you know, they roster. Um, New York Liberty, Sabrina Inescu. Uh, we lost um, We lost our center, Jamar. Um the big uh, white girl that went to Connecticut, she hit those big shots for us last year in the championship. Um, Stephanie Dolson. Stephanie Dolson's now with the New York Liberty, et cetera. Um, and so just curious, uh, Sherry, um, I know you watched the WNBA. Uh, which of these teams you feel like has the best chance of bringing home a WNBA championship this season? Um. I'm honestly going to give uh, some love to you guys up there in Chicago. Um, I'm going to take it back to the sky. I'm a huge, huge Candace Parker fan. Um, and I just, you know, after what I saw um, from them um, last year, I just, I, I really think that, you know, I really think that they're going to try to make another go at it. And I think they can actually do it. So I'm going to give it to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 do have uh, Courtney Vandersloot. She's like the goat of point guards in the WNBA, in my opinion. The, the, I mean, the dimes, Jamar, the clutch moments. The, the girl can ball. Allie Quigley, one of the goats of. I mean, you can argue that she's like the Ray Allen of the WNBA, right? Like yeah. when she get hot, it ain't no stopping her. And and a lot of people view her as the best shooter. She's won the three point championship. Uh, contest in the WNBA like five years. So obviously the woman can shoot lights out. Uh, the Paul girl, you know, Northwest uh, suburban girl. So um, I, I like your pick, uh, Sherry. I really do. Uh, Jamar, um, who do you feel is uh, the, the top contender uh, this season? Oh, I'm going to keep it simple and brief until I actually see somebody else. I'm, 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 I'm a homer. I'm sticking with our team until I see it. I'm sticking with our team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what about you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say uh it looks like we might run it back. Uh no, I mean, but a lot of teams have been making a lot of moves. Uh, like you guys stated, Phoenix, they made a couple moves. Uh, I know Derek Fisher's trying to load up. Um, I just seen the other day he just got a uh, – actually took one off. It's uh, Lexi Brown, uh, D. Brown's daughter. 
Uh, yeah. So she just signed with them. But uh, uh, I'm like Jamar stated, I'm a homer. I think we're going to uh, run it back. Um, even though I know Candace, she's she's pretty, she's getting up there in age, but uh, we should be fine. We should be fine. I, I love y'all, but I'm, I got to be real. Here. I, it's going to be a miracle. Um, <laughs> first and foremost, Phoenix, y'all, let's just say if they were to get Brittany Grant at Bragg, then we ain't winning up. Um, Sophie Cunningham is one of the toughest defenders, as you know, Sherry, this, this white girl from Australia, in the WNBA. Diana Taurasi is just, I mean, a woman can shoot threes like you shoot on a vending machine. You know how you go to Dave and Buster, you just shoot threes? Like, that's how she does it in real life. Um, Skylar Diggins Smith. Kia Nurse, y'all, didn't play in the finals last year. She's a UConn girl. Um, you, know, you know how Gino Oriana uh, brings out UConn. Um, she's one of the top players in the WNBA. Then, y'all, this would really put the icing on the cake for them, y'all. Not only do they got Brianna Turner and Shea Petty, who are like the people that do all the dirty work, but they went ahead and they took down the shields from us, which was bogus. They took down the shields from us, gave her a bigger offer of money. She's like, all right, I need money. Let's go. And so she went to Phoenix, but then they got Tina Charles. Oh, Jamar, you know about Tina. You know about Tina Charles. Tina oh, Charles yes. is, a, is, is another UConn uh, individual, former WNBA MVP. I mean, she was what? It was between her and the other girl from Connecticut that was back to back for the MVP last year. So Tina Charles is a walking double double. She can drop 30 on you on any given night. So that like really just makes things like almost in a way lopsided. So I'm not saying that my sky can't repeat, but it's just gonna be hard, y'all. But then wait, let's get to Seattle Storm. Seattle Storm, as you know, Jamar has won a championship two of the last three years. The only reason why they probably didn't win last year, y'all, is because Brianna Stewart was hurt. Now, Brianna Stewart, as you know, Sherry, is the Kevin Durant of the WNBA. A dog. She is a dog. Yeah. Dog. Buckets, buckets, buckets from anywhere on the court. And so she's back. You bring in Sue Bird back. Jewel Lloyd, their, their shooting guard, is a former WNBA championship MVP. She's one of the best shooting guards in the league. Um, you got Gabby Williams, who, I mean, the girl can play. The girl is one of, she's one of the top defenders in the WNBA. So now you can sit on anybody um, and, and allow Brianna Stewart and everybody else to just go off. And so, um, Brianna January, uh, this girl has won championships with the Connecticut Sun before, um, a fantastic point guard. And so um, it, it's going to be very, very, very interesting. And Lauren Jackson, she's multiple. How many championships has she won? And so it, it's going to be really interesting. And then Seattle, y'all, I don't know if y'all ever remember the dude off American Idol. Um, he was the guy that was rumored to sleep with Paula Abdul. Um, Corey something. He got a sister. Okay. That's in the de- What's his name again? Is it Corey? I, I may be wrong, but not Corey Salmon, is it or something like that? Corey, Corey, all right, let's go to Google, y'all. Corey, American Idol, Paul Abdul. Um, yeah, so Corey Clark, y'all. Corey Clark. Um, he got a sister, okay? And she done won championships with um, Seattle before. The only reason um, why she uh, didn't play this year was because of an injury. She got injured in the offseason. But um, his sister, y'all, if y'all didn't know, um, is a very, very fantastic ball player. And, and she is like one of the top defenders, legitly in the WNBA, Alicia Clark. Alicia Clark. Okay. If you ever need to Google her, look her up. Um, she's another wild card for Seattle. So I'm just breaking this down. We are excited about the NBA, y'all. Y'all need to be excited about the WNBA, too. I am not additionally going to sleep on the Connecticut Sun, who's had the best record. They got a great core in Connecticut, one-two punch, great one-two punch. Um, and then the New York Liberty, Sabrina Anescu, she can go off for 50 on you if you let her. And so 
she got some pieces now in New York. The Las Vegas Aces, I mean, they got the former WNBA MVP. Um, we know we we know what the Las Vegas a- Aces bring. They only lost what? They lost what game uh five to the uh Phoenix Mercury. Um, yeah. and if whoever won that series was gonna go to the WNBA finals, me and you, Jamar, I remember watching that game and watching how it came down to like the oh. last few seconds, and yeah, then that was, uh that was Diana crazy. Tarassi hurt their heart. <laughs> <laughs> and they cried crazy. all on the court, Las Vegas. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was crazy how it all went down. But um, you still got two killers over in Las Vegas with Asia Wilson and uh, Chelsea Gray. And yeah. so um, and you got some other pieces in Vegas, too. So I'm very excited, y'all, for the WNBA season. There's going to be a lot of uh, good talent out there. And so um, – we always excited about the NBA, y'all. Get excited about the WNBA, too, because it's going to be some uh, fireworks for sure this season with a lot of good teams. All right. Um, let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers, y'all, and LeBron James. And so, um, Sherry, you are a LeBron James fan. And so I'm just curious, with you being a LeBron James fan, are you a Lakers fan as well? Because it's a difference. Um... Yes and no, I guess I'm I am a Lakers fan because of LeBron. Um, okay, but it's it's not something that I I was proud of um, mm-hmm. at first. Um, the Lakers to me are like the Cowboys to me, um, <laughs> and I wake up every morning saying "f the Cowboys." So <laughs> I don't I, I I did not want to to have to cheer for the purple and gold. I but like that's her. where my boy is, so that's where I am. And um, <laughs> they look like hot garbage this year, so you know, there's that. But you know. yeah, and, and so what? What's the problem with the Lakers? Is it um, chemistry? Is it age? Is it coaching? Um, it's. I think it's a combination of um, age and just some of the choices that they made. I, I know that LeBron probably um, does a lot of their, you know, choo- well, not choosing, but, you know, he he puts a lot of, of, of his stock in, in who they get for the team. Um, and I think that, you know, this year he was trying to get what he would consider to be, you know, kind of a star-studded team. But it's like you got Russell Westbrook, who never – He's, in my opinion, I would say he's, have you ever heard of BH kids? Like those kids who like are super hyper and like just kind of all over the place. Yeah, he's like, like <laughs> one of those to me. And that's how he plays basketball. Like slow down, Russell, slow down. <laughs> right, right. And then you put him with, you know, a bunch of age, you know, I, I thought that they never should have got rid of um, Alex Caruso, um, who now plays for the Bulls. Um, and, you know, I just, it, it's just, it wasn't the right roster for for that team. And, you know, I feel like we're starting to see that now. You got um, Anthony Davis, who is like paper mache. You know, he gets hurt <laughs> every other, you know, every time he's out, he comes back. And then, you know, two games later, he's he's out again. So it's just, it's just a lot of, of a lot of missteps with the Lakers this year. And unfortunately, you know, now LeBron's hurt. And so it's just, it's it's not their year. And we have to be okay with that. <laughs> it's rough. Um, it's it's rough. definitely rough watching the Lakers. Um, you know, they, last night, we all knew that they had to win that game. And, and they still lost. <laughs> I'm like. This is an every night thing. <laughs> I'm like, geez. I'm like, oh, they lost, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just like further, further proof. And, and, and check this out, right? So you let Ingram come in, right? He's like, y'all traded me, we walked the BAM in. Like, y'all don't remember I used to be pretty much a borderline all-star with y'all. He came in last night and showed out on the Lakers. I mean, showed out on them. And they was talking about this pregame, and he did it in the game, and the Lakers just let it happen. And I'm like, geez. But – one thing you did see with the Lakers is that LeBron and AD, they both got their points. And so, um, 
that, that was something that happened, but it's just like with the rest of the team, it's like. And so, um, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's shocking, y'all. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking. But on the other hand, uh, Prescott JB stated, I'd just like to take a moment to walk Kizri Gun Rezi to the Chicago Sky. My goodness, bro. She's the top international player, by the way. I forgot the name. So y'all should be happy. Okay. And I'm happy too as a Sky fan. Because it kind of solidifies y'all picking away. Um, she's like one of the top international players. And so she's coming with us to the sky this season. So mm-hmm. that's great. Um, but yeah, on the other hand, with the Lakers, um, ain't no W's happening around there. Lakerland, match with the L, match with the L's, the losses. <laughs> yes. So um, and that match with LeBron too. <laughs> but but here's the thing though. Because regardless, you know, and a, and a lot of people, you know, I'm not going to get into other debates that I've had about LeBron, but I think one thing that I can say about him over his entire career, including in L.A., um, you know, he he's done a lot for the game of basketball. And I think that, you know, once he's done, whether it be next year or whenever he finally leaves the game, You know, I think people will have no choice but to respect him for who he's been as a player on every team that he's been on from Cleveland to Miami, back to Cleveland, you know, to to L.A. So, you know, I know it it looks grim for us LeBron fans, you know, because we always want to see him win because, you know, there's there's not too many arguments that that we can have as far as for me, you know, thinking that LeBron is the GOAT. And a lot of people don't agree with that, you know, mentality that I have. And then, you know, to see him. Looking have like a, that for a you, Jamar. Huh? What you looking like that for you? When you when you mentioned uh, LeBron as the goat, Jamar uh, almost ran out of his chair. What what happened? Oh, sure. Jamar? <laughs> Especially being from Chicago, I already know. You know, he was a Tar Heel too, right? Oh yeah. No. Okay. We we we, um, we we can we can have this debate later. Okay. <laughs> we'll save it for later. But you know, so it's like you know, I I I don't know. I I I just hats off to LeBron, you know, for his career. He's 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 always done great, and you know, I hate to see his team look the way they look right now. But you know, that that cannot take away from from who he's been over his career. So. And this is another debate for another day, y'all. But, man, I just – part of me just – I would love to see LeBron get that number five. And I feel like if he don't get that number five, I can't really put him nowhere near Jordan. That's just – you know, what like – I mean – Man, I, I need him what to if get he more becomes number one as the top scorer, though? Man. What if he – Say it again? Top, I said, what if he becomes the top scorer, though? I mean, he is the top. Uh, yeah, he's right there. But, you know, even amongst that – no, nah, Jordan just six and zero in the finals, bro. Jordan like showed up at every yeah, moment. Uh, like Jordan so, never let his teammates. Like it's just so much I can talk about with him. I mean, from I'm from Chicago. Me and Sheree, we we right here today. Panthers fan and LeBron fan. So I feel like the Michael Jordan and LeBron debate could go either way because you can make a case that you know Michael Jordan he was six and zero. He did his thing in his era. I like to say they were both the greatest in their era. I would say LeBron is the greatest in his era. I know he lost in the finals and all of that jazz, but we've never seen an athlete from year one to what, year 19, be this consistent with no major injuries, no time off, and go to the final, go to the finals, what, eight? Was was it eight nine times? Oh, he's, he's, nine four, times. he's four and uh six, right? Yeah, so, so ten times. Like yeah. eight. I think he went eight times in a row. I mean, that's that's impressive. And I always tell people we're not gonna we're not gonna appreciate him until he's not playing no more. It's it's always the the legium and you know all this mess. All he flops and all this. I mean, yeah, maybe so, but I mean, we have to appreciate greatness. I mean. 19 years to beat this because he's averaging 30 points at what 36 37 that's that's crazy Mm -hmm. i mean that's insane i mean granted the team they just they don't play defense i've been saying that since day one no defense they don't play no defense like they got their numbers last night they play no defense but they probably what scored 100 some points and they give up 130 140 they never play defense 
the team is not constructed right um, from the coaching staff. It starts at the top, and I feel like that's the Lakers' downfall. See, the Lakers, they never want to um, – they never want to build. The Lakers just want to win now. So they're going to make any decision to win now. Even if you go back to, even if you go back to the Shaq and Kobe days, they didn't even want to build then. They gave up. I mean, it worked, but they gave up what Eddie Jones, Nick Van Eck, they gave up all those guys and then they got Shaq. So, I mean, that's just been their MO. They never want to build. So. All right. It's the I mean, LA I'm market really thing. Surprised. That's it. They just take advantage of the LA market. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really surprised. Now, Kobe Bryant just ended up being who Kobe Bryant is. But, I mean, just think about it. Kobe Bryant never turned out to what he was. They would they would never have no championship. It just would have been Shaq over there, and they would have lost all their picks. So this is just a thing. Like she said, you see it with the Cowboys. The Cowboys, the Yankees, and the Lakers, they never want to build. They just want to use their money, use the market, and do whatever. And it sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't work. I just think that's... I just think that's their biggest downfall, but I think we have to, I think we have to start having that conversation about LeBron as being the greatest, especially if he becomes the number one scoring leader of all time. I mean, that's, that's exceptional. He's not even a, he's not considered a scorer. He's considered a playmaker or a floor general, and he'll be the number one scorer Look, of all time. And now for, for, Say, for time's sake, I, I won't crush you on this debate because we got to focus on some other things. Yeah. But LeBron should be the all-time scorer with his longevity compared to Jordan. He yeah. should be the all-time leading scorer for sure. Um, yeah, and so, yeah. you know, kudos to LeBron on that. Um, it's just so many moments where I look at LeBron's career and I just state, like, against Dallas, I do not see Jordan. I don't give a damn – I do not see John losing that series. He would have found some. I don't even see Kobe losing that. They would have found some type of way to win that series. LeBron yeah, has just went through so many heels and triumphs of maturity and immaturity in his career, things in that nature. That's kind of cost him some championships and all these different things. Like it's 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 a lot that goes on with that. But things that Mike I, didn't have to go through. Things that Mike didn't have to go through because he didn't have the platform that LeBron has right now with social media and all that other stuff. LeBron's entire career has been in front of cameras, whereas Mike's has just been kind of, you know, back in the, you know, back in the quiet. So I just, you know, it was back in the days before the social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LeBron definitely has faced a lot of pressure, y'all, since day one. He's been facing pressure since St. Vincent, St. Mary. And, and I'm totally with y'all. But one thing that LeBron uh, don't have that Jordan had, and I'm going to just separate it here as a killing instinct, and I'm going to leave it at that. Just, just a natural born killer. And so, um, you know, we can talk about this, y'all, because this will go until 10 o'clock, I promise. Um, but I definitely see y'all point, and it's going to be some, y'all, to where if LeBron get this fifth ring, then you can really, really seriously start hearing some rumblings because – I mean, you know, for him to get there again would be just fantastic. But is he going to get there again? We'll see, um, man. Because um, is no. he going to get there with that Lakers team? I don't <laughs> Not know. Not this year. <laughs> Not this um, year. <laughs> you know, uh, do we have to go back to Cleveland, y'all, to make it happen? Like, this is um, various questions that oh, have boy. to be uh, raised. Um, the fact that LeBron dragged the 2018 Cavs, a.k.a. a group of airplane mechanics, and school bus drivers to the NBA <laughs> Not school bus drivers. Wow. <laughs> People with class B, C, D, L, son. <laughs> so Prescott JB stating that that was a, a great feat. And I agree it was, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, listen, he had nothing, basically. And has done that on two different teams where he's had to basically take what he's had and, and carry them. And I just, you know, that to me, you know, when they when they played um, the Golden State Warriors um, for the, what, 2016 championship when he was playing with Cleveland, um, and everybody talks about Kyrie and how he made the shot or whatever. And I'm like, but if LeBron doesn't make that block on Andre Iguodala, that shot may not even matter. You know what I'm saying? And, not, and it's, that is not to take anything from Kyrie whatsoever. But I just feel like, you know, 
LeBron has had to do a lot over his career to make sure that he put puts his teams in the best position that he can put them in. And, you know, to beat a, a team that was as good as the Golden State Warriors were that year and to come back from, from the deficit that they had to come back from to actually win that championship, I felt like was probably one of the greatest feats I had ever seen. So, you know. And then on top of that, to win the bubble championship, to win the bubble, Sherry, to win the bubble, like. A lot of people ooh. don't, like they, they talk about that. They said that's the Disney championship. They don't try to give them credit for that championship at all. Yeah, I'm like, that's one of the hardest. Man. You know what I'm, but to me, like, you know, that was one of the hardest situations for them to put themselves in, being in the bubble like that, being away from their family and stuff like that. Like, that was hard on them. And for him to win that championship anyway, I thought that was that was pretty a pretty good feat. But what about now? I mean, you, you hey, you, you make you make some valid points. Says one on the early morning sports talk podcast, and so. Um, you are one of the uh, true LeBron followers that's making up a very legit argument. Um, I just feel like Sherry is still some little pieces missing and, and it's not completely fulfilled for me yet, but um, maybe they'll be fulfilled over the time of his career. Um, you know, maybe LeBron get another two, three years or something. We'll see. So um, right now the argument is still up in the air. We still got some, um, we still got some more ironing out to do with that. Um, yeah, but right now, hell no. No, he's not good now. Hell no. Okay, <laughs> on the other hand, um, let's finish out this morning, y'all, with a last piece. We got to talk uh, the NBA standings, okay? And so right now we see in the East, y'all, it's, it's, it's going back and forth, right? Uh, but right now, Miami seem to be separating themselves. We see Brooklyn, y'all. They are AC, but it's something going on in Brooklyn. They drop a lot of games, you know, like they, 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 they drop a lot of games in the fourth quarter. Um, we got our Bulls who number five, Philly number four, um, Boston who's creeped up. Uh, so we got a lot going on in the East, and uh, obviously it's, it's, it's a wild, wild West. And so just curious, y'all, at this point, who is the best teams in the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference? If you had to pick for the NBA Finals today, who would you pick? And so, uh, Sherry, let's begin with you, Jamar, and then Ann, and then I chime in. Um, I would say coming out of the East, um, I would probably go – I'm going to go with the Heat uh, coming out of the East. And then for the West, I would probably say Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And why the heat? Why do you feel the heat um, is um, the identity, you know, I, they coach? Well, I just, I feel like they're one of those teams that like, they're kind of slept on, you know, and they do have a lot of, I, in my opinion, they have, you know, a good amount of weapons, you know, on that team. Jimmy Butler, you know, I've always liked Jimmy Butler. My my husband used to say that that was my boyfriend. Um <laughs> But, you know, I just I've always liked him. And I just I feel like each season they've kind of crept up, you know, a little bit. And they've, you know, kind of almost done it. And I mean, you saw you saw what they did against the Lakers in the bubble. Like they took them to the yeah. wire. So I just feel like, you know, this could be their year. Um, unless you want to say the Hornets, the Hornets can come out of the East, too. My Hornets <laughs> just shout out to the Hornets. Yeah. On the side, trying to get them get the play in. Anyway, uh, but um, but yeah, and then like I said, Phoenix on the West. You know, I just I don't I don't I don't really see a team on the West Coast, in my opinion, um, that could take them seven games. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jamar, your thoughts, bro. <laughs> um and as and as far as the the west pick i mean it, it's phoenix the all now the only other team right now i can see that could throw a monkey wrench into that is memphis but other than that i, I think it's we're looking like a finals rematch to me just based on how these two teams are playing at this moment okay um y'all know steph curry gonna be back for the playoffs okay uh, yeah, but what what version of Steph Curry are we gonna get? That's that's my only thing. I'm just I, I I'm not saying that they can beat. I'm just saying he'll be back for the playoffs, and so uh, it's just was, it's gonna make things very 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 interesting because I just if, know how Steph Curry can change. And it will. If, and it will. If they get out the first round and meet Memphis, right? It might be curtains for 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 them because for whatever reason they just can't beat Memphis. 
It'll be interesting because, and, and I was going to bring that up in my argument, my bad end, but no, Memphis, I feel, is a very severe contender for anybody in the West. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not just, obviously, I believe, yeah, like you say, Jamal, if you put them on a neutral court, Memphis could very well beat Golden State in a series. Um, they've even kind of owned, uh, they beat Phoenix this season. They're one of the very few teams that beat Phoenix. And so um, it'll be very interesting to see Memphis for sure. And we know about their culture down there, that grid and grind culture. It's hard to play in Memphis. Um, they defend, they get up in you in, they, they do all the dirty work. And so it'll be very interesting to watch Memphis for sure. Um, and so, yeah. What about yourself, Ann? Who do you feel is the top contenders for the East and the West? Uh, if I had to pick a finals today, I might have to go with Jamar's pick. I'll probably have to go with the Bucks and Phoenix. Um, I mean, Boston has been hired. Miami is, you know, they have a game where they look like they don't go straight to the finals, and then they have a game where they're about to fight each other on the court. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but the Bucks, the Bucks look focused. But Phoenix, Phoenix looks really focused. I feel like I feel like this could be Phoenix year to get over the hump. Phoenix looks real focused. They're possible. They might be my NBA Finals pick, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Barring injury. Right, right, right. Um, so just quickly, Prescott JB stated that the bubble was the Disney AAU Invitational, so it really don't. Oh work. my god! <laughs> See, they don't want to give him credit. That's why. Yeah, the, the AAU Invitational. <laughs> hey, but y'all know the Disney. Of my boys, man. <laughs> oh man, y'all know the That's end, worse the than the Maui Invitational. Oh my god. <laughs> The AAU invitation to y'all takes place every year in Disney. So um yeah, he was kind of he was kind of referring to that. And so um, yeah, obviously he got his opinions on uh, that championship. And so um yeah, um on the other hand, y'all, um man, Phoenix. Uh yeah, I like Phoenix to come out the West. Uh, but as stated, I'm gonna put this out here. If Steph Curry y'all is healthy. I'm telling you, I am all eyes. I am all eyes. No disrespect to Memphis, but I am all eyes on Golden State and Phoenix. That will be a hell of a series to watch <laughs> if Steph Curry's back. Just put that out there. On the other hand, with the East, it is not as simple. The East, y'all, Robert Williams put a big hole here because he was going to make things super interesting. Um, the East, Sherry, has a lot of unfolding. The Bulls aren't even healthy. If my Bulls was healthy, I feel like they could be hell on the kingdom in the East if they were fully healthy. Um, man, of course, Miami, you know. Um, a shout out to Max Struss, by the way, y'all. He is a fantastic defender, and he put the clamp shawl on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown earlier this week. Max Scruss is a Chicago kid, went to Stag, y'all, um, and he's not a brother. Um, and he went to DePaul, and he's now turning into one of the top defenders and three-point shooters in the league. And he done somehow got this Jimmy Butler identity in him, and he's tough as nails. And so when I see your point, Sherry, of Miami, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. They could either get put out the first round in, or they could win the East. That's yeah. literally Miami's ceiling. Um, but on the other hand, for me, y'all, look, Milwaukee, Milwaukee, I mean, former NBA champs, Giannis unstoppable, MVP <laughs> candidate again. This is, this is just fantastic, man. But y'all know where I'm going here. Y'all know who I'm going with for the East. Who I got for the East, y'all? Brooklyn. You read it? You got it. <laughs> I'm going with the I'm going with the Brooklyn Nets. And the reason why I'm going with Brooklyn, you can go, Jamal. You can go. <laughs> the reason why I'm going with the Brooklyn Nets is because I don't see nobody truly, truly stopping that chemistry come playoff time. And don't get me wrong, I know that Brooklyn at times struggles on the defensive end. I know they do. 
I know they struggle heavily on the defensive end. But I got to say, man, when it comes to Brooklyn, they are the team with the highest ceiling. And if they can hit that peak, I'm telling right, you, man. your Bucks, Jamar, your Bucks, they done lucked up. They lucked up last year in the playoffs because <laughs> they lucked up last year in the playoffs because my man, did, his feet was too big, okay? His foot was too big. So he lucked up last year in the playoffs. And it happened again the other night. And so uh-uh. <laughs> I feel that in the playoffs, Brooklyn is going to overcome all these guys and they're going to show them what time it is. So I got the Brooklyn Nets for the season. All right, look, look, real real quick. Look, okay, so, you know, last year's last year. Not, that's not even the same team as last year. There, there's no James Harden. They, they, they got rid of that. They don't even play defense right now. Matter of fact, the last time I seen these two teams play, if I'm not mistaken, Chris Middleton gets ejected halfway through the fourth quarter. Milwaukee's down nine, and all of a sudden, Milwaukee comes back. Giannis out here, you know, doing cr- crossovers and threes, side of game, and just look invincible out here. And Kevin Durant can't can't hit a game winning shot. So I look, man, like look, I get it. Brooklyn has the highest ceiling, but they don't play any defense, none whatsoever, and that's their that's their downfall. That is I don't see really their downfall. They can I don't have, see Kyrie Irving locking nobody up. But I don't see that. nobody. That's you, you making my point, Jamal. I don't see nobody locking up Kyrie or Kevin Durant at all. I'm saying I don't see Kyrie Irving putting the clamps on anybody. Period. And that's what I'm saying on offensive end when they get the ball. I don't see nobody putting no clamps on them. That it, that would include Drew Holiday. <laughs> that would include okay. anybody. It don't matter. Okay. Well, it, it don't matter. Sherry over there is stuck because she's like, yeah, I, I'm come. just saying it's gonna like, be real if, close. If it's you're Brooklyn close. and you're up nine against a team that lost their second or third best player and uh-huh. you're at home and you lose that game, I, I don't know what to tell you. Hey man, it's gonna be different coming to playoffs. Trust me, it's gonna be really, really different. And so I don't like I don't like Kevin Durant, so I don't want him winning anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We will see. Uh, KD is uh, definitely, let's say, um, he's a very outspoken guy. But on the other hand, um, you can't admit that he is uh, definitely, uh, according to many, the best player in the world. Um, definitely between him, Giannis, um, really between them two as the best player in the world. And so um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the East. Um, I, I feel even if Brooklyn's the eighth seed, um, they, they're going to be a problem for anybody, period. They're going to be a major problem for anybody. And so um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see the Eastern Conference unfold with all these great teams going forth. It's going to be a really, really good Eastern Conference. And so, yes, um, that concludes our conversation for this morning, everybody. Uh, what we do, Sherry, as we leave and as we head into the weekend, we do final thoughts and shout outs. And so um, if you um, have any final thoughts or shout outs, leave us with some at this moment. Any final Um, thoughts or shout outs, Sherry? I want to shout out um, my boy, Matt, um, Matt Morrow. He actually, we do um, Charlotte Football Insiders together. Um, We cover high school football here in Charlotte and the surrounding areas. Um, And he's just always been, you know, Top tier guy for me, so I just want to give him a shout out. Okay. All right, uh, Jamar, you 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 back? Are, are you back, Jamar? All What's right. Up? So, um, any final thoughts or shout outs um, as we head into the weekend and as my Brooklyn Nets eventually take down your Bucks? I'm gonna ignore that last part. Um, <laughs> no, I just. Uh, you know, normally I'll give a sports take, but honestly, uh, Sherry, I'm just glad that, you know, you joined us today. Um, our first female guest, uh, you the first person I thought of, so definitely glad that you could join us. Yep. I'll come back. Bro, I'm, any f- I'm down to come back anytime. Just let me know. Wonderful. Yes. Uh, and in this case, when the playoffs hit, we will have you back, Sherry. Okay. All right. Great. Yes. And bro, any final thoughts, shout outs? Um, same as Jamar. Uh, shout out to Sheree. Um, we got another Panthers and LeBron fan on. I'm all down for it. Uh, 
And also, you know, shout out to those Bears. We still haven't got a number one receiver. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting, bro. Even Darnell Mooney? <laughs> not a number one. Like- I love Darnell Mooney, but not a number one. <laughs> And Darnell Moody can take the top off the defense. But, yeah, um, on the other hand, man, um, shout out to the, um, man, White Sox, man. They, they gave up Kimbrough um, to the uh, L.A. Dodgers. And so that has happened. Um, and so that's very, very It was a necessary move. Yeah. Um, the, the White Sox, however, um, I do want to shout them out because – I took a look at their roster this week, and they look really good. And so I'm excited for the White Sox. Um, the Chicago Cubs, they are increasingly getting better, low-key. Yeah. Um, watching them, they don't have much of a big-name roster, but they like a pretty decent team. Um, but I'm definitely Sox fan all day. Um, on the other hand, Sherry, thank you for joining us. Uh, we truly appreciate you joining us, uh, the first okay. female here on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. We've been one uh, female on here for quite some time. And so to uh, see you come on, um, it has been a wonderful show uh, for you to join us. And thank you for joining us. We definitely look forward uh, to chopping it up with you in the near future. And so, yes, um, until then, everybody, um, enjoy the Final Four today, UNC versus Duke, Villanova in Kansas. Um, And outside of that, everybody stay safe. Um, and have a great and productive weekend. We thank you all for chopping it up with us on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Have a great weekend and peace. Go Tar Heels.